Hey, sports fans and nerds alike, I'm Cleet Callahan, and welcome to the first episode of Baseball Physics. Cue the intro music. So this is a series where I'm going to be combining two things that I love very much, baseball and physics. And uh, we're going to combine them to, to kind of teach you a little something that you may not know. If you know it already, that's fine. Uh, if you don't want to know it, that's fine. But uh, I'm interested in it and what the hell. All right. So in this episode, we're going to talk about something that you've probably heard a whole bunch in baseball, especially in the new StatCast era. And that is something called launch angle. What exactly is the launch angle? Okay, so before we talk about exactly what launch angle is, we should talk about first the evolution of swing analysis. And for that, we're going to have to go all the way back to the 1990s and the mythical Montreal Expos. Before this time period, most of the data collection dealt with the pitchers, since they were the athletes on the field that were initiating the motion of the ball. Velocity, pitch count, uh, strikeouts. These stats were countable or easily identifiable. And it was these easily identifiable stats that promoted the decisions from front office management and scouts. Back in the 1990s, the Montreal Expos had a general manager by the name of Dan Duquette. Yes, the same Dan Duquette that drafted Tim Wakefield, uh, Johnny Damon, Jason Veritek, Kevin Euclid, Derek Lowe, Manny Ramirez, Nomar Gashiapara. And it was the same Dan Duquette who, while working for the Red Sox, brought over a little known pitcher by the name of Pedro Martinez. Sadly, he is more so known in Boston as the GM who let Roger Clemens slip away in free agency. Um, it was sad. Anyway, Dan Duquette was kind of like the Billy Bean uh, before Billy Bean was known and before Moneyball was going on because he was looking at the ways that hitters were hitting the ball, not the way that pitchers were throwing it. Dan Duquette, along with his fitness consultants, they, they knew that the only way that they could compete with the big budget teams was to further dive into the actual science of baseball. And this is why I love physics, because you can't argue the laws of the universe. If there are certain laws in place with the way that the ball and the bat operate that produce good numbers, you can't argue against that. Let's get the players that produce those good numbers. You know, forget about, ah, oh, he's got a hell of a swing, that player, or, oh, he's built like a ball player. Or did you ever shake his hand, he's got hands like a ball player. That boy's had a baseball mitt in his crib since before he was suckling on his mama's teeth. Sorry. That's not what makes good ball players is my point. Those are subjective opinions. Physics is all about objectivity. The Expos in the 90s had teams of scientists studying the swing. Hell, they were even using early forms of motion capture to evaluate a player's swing. But with the 1994 strike, Dan Duquette leaving Montreal and uh, the slashing of their budget, all of these studies kind of, they stopped. Since then, all these secret hitter strategies kind of permeated the league. They leaked out and more and more players were starting to watch video of their swing. They discovered that their approach to the ball mattered quite a bit. You know, swing down at the ball. That wasn't necessarily the best way to go about it. Fast forward to the 2010s. I don't know when the term launch angle actually uh, came out uh, in, in the public, but I do remember hearing it back when Josh Donaldson, uh, a vocal proponent for launch angle, won the AL MVP. Uh, I met him, by the way. Super nice dude. Okay, Clay, enough of the history lesson. What the heck is launch angle? Okay, okay, okay. Let me get a bat. I forgot to get a bat and a ball. Okay, so here's a bat. This is a left 
for Dead 2 promotional bat that I got when I used to work at GameStop. And we have a ball. This is a ball. This is the only game ball I ever won in Little League. I hit a triple. Anyway, so, okay, if we were to do a bird's eye view, this is what the bat would look like hitting the ball. And this is generally where the sweet spot of the bat is. And we're going to have a sweet spot episode coming up uh, in the future. So, uh, all right. Now, oh gosh. And bats are generally uh, a lot larger uh, than this. Um, okay. So now as the ball approaches the bat, uh, it makes contact with the bat like that, right? So this part where the ball meets the bat is considered a point of impact because that's exactly what it is. A point, a point in space. Now you could say, Cleet, there's a lot of surface area that's being touched between the bat and the ball. That's true. What you essentially would want to do is take the middle ground of there, as you can see in this demonstration, that the point is essentially the centers of the surface areas when they touch. The center of mass on an object is the point on that object, where you can assume that the entirety of that object's mass is concentrated. So for a baseball, it would be dead center right in the middle. Okay, in other words, it's the point of an object where if you had to imagine this object as a single atom, where would that atom be? If we draw a line between the center of mass of this object and the center of mass of this object, then you'd get a, a line. And that's, that's cool, right? But considering that the bat is inflicting a force upon this ball, that line is now a vector. Vector. So at the point of impact, let's add an X and Y axis. If we consider the x-axis as zero degrees and the y-axis as 90 degrees, then the angle indicated here, let's use theta, is the launch angle. Hooray, cut back to me, we figured it out. Nice, now, depending on where that ball is going to be, the launch angle is going to be different, right? Right? So if the ball hits at zero degrees, it means the launch angle is at zero degrees. Okay, so if the launch angle is at 90 degrees and the ball goes straight up, you got yourself a pop up. Any ball that's hit below the zero point on the X axis is definitely gonna be a grounder, okay? Ooh, that's a great sound. If the ball is hit on that zero, below the zero axis, it's more or less going to be an out, okay? In fact, baseball players say that if they hit the ball on the ground, they consider it a failure. Even if the ball sneaks through the hole or goes up the middle, baseball players these days do not want to hit the ball on the ground. They want that launch angle to be just right to where they can hit a home run. A sweet ding dong, ding a ling, ding dong, dinger. So now, if this is 90 degrees in the positive, this is 90 degrees in the negative, uh, there's really only 180 degrees of area where you are able to hit the ball into play, into the field. If the pitch is coming in this way and you decide to hit it this way, you have grossly misunderstood the purpose of baseball. All right, so that's great. We know what a launch angle is, but how do you hit the ball far? If the purpose of baseball is to hit the ball far and hard, the, uh, what is the best launch angle to do that? How hard do you need to hit the ball to hit it over the fence? Well, we're going to get into that in our next episode when we discuss Newton's second law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration. That's going to do it for our first episode of Baseball Physics. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you push that subscribe button. Make sure you push that alert button. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. Make sure you comment below if you have any questions about further episodes. Also, follow me on Facebook at Cleet Callahan. Follow me on Instagram at Cleet Callahan. Follow me on Twitter at Cleet Callahan. Why don't you watch me? Watch you. Watch me play video games at twitch.tv slash play by play. I'm Cleet Callahan. We'll see you at the ball game or in the classroom or wherever you happen to be. Bye!